Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so as we have more participants trickling in, I think um, it's it'll be good for us to get started. Um, I wanted to say hi, my name is Karen and I am the admissions counselor here at Baker and Bloom. Um, I graduated Taft 2001 um, and then I went off to Harvard where I got uh, my psychology degree. And, um, and then I went and got my MBA at Harvard in 2010. Uh, I, my career has spanned business, retail, and now I'm in education. Um, but throughout this time, one of the, my favorite things is to mentor people. And um, it really is rewarding when I work with uh, teenagers who are just starting their education journey and figuring out what they enjoy. So I've been um, helping at Baker and Bloom students apply to boarding schools in the US and universities. Um, and my students have received offers uh, from Andover, Exeter, Deerfield, Hotchkiss, Lawrenceville, Loomis, Milton, St. Paul's, and Taft. Joining me today uh, will be Mr. Rory Riley. Um, he is our UK boarding school admissions consultant. Um, he is extremely experienced. Um, he graduated from Trinity College in Dublin, um, taught in a number of schools, uh, including King's College Wimbledon, uh, King's School Canterbury. Um, he actually also served on the geography interview panel at Hertford College for Oxford. Um, and he has worked for 10 years at the King's School for admission. So he is well connected with all the registrars uh, in the UK. So I'll get started with what US boarding schools are looking for. And then shortly, uh, Rory will give his view on what UK boarding schools are looking for. Uh, just a just note, if you have any questions, um, we do have uh, people from our uh, Baker and Bloom team who will be fielding these questions. Please feel free to type them into the chat and we'll address them um, as we go along. So what are US boarding schools looking for? For me, whenever I ask my students to do research, I tend to ask them to look at the boarding school's mission statements or their mottos. Uh, this can be found on their website in the about section. Um, I know most of you probably click into the admissions and look through the admissions process, but when you're doing your research, I think it's quite important to look at the board, the mission statements for a lot of these schools because it'll give you a sense of what the school's values are and what type of a community they're trying to build. Um, so a few highlights here. Deerfield Academy prepares students for leadership in a rapidly changing world. Groton inspires the lives of character, scholarship, leadership, and service within a diverse, inclusive, and close-knit community. Rooted in an inspiring natural setting, Berkshire School instills the highest standard of character and citizenship and a commitment to academic, artistic, and athletic excellence. Our community fosters diversity, a dedication to environmental stewardship, which is a big theme in a lot of these schools now, and an enduring love for learning. On the West Coast, through commitment, scholarship, companionship, and service, each member of the Kate community contributes to what our founders call the spirit of this place, all compounded of beauty and virtue, quiet study, vigorous play, and hard work. And for service-oriented people, for Taft and for Andover, um, non at CB administrator said Utminstret and non CB not for self, not to be uh, not to be served, but to serve. Um, this is more of a community service-oriented theme. I won't read through all of them. Uh, please feel free to have a look through them afterwards as well. Okay. So the key themes we've noticed in our in the mission statements are academic excellence, service leadership, community, art, athletics, etc. So with academic excellence, at the end of the day, you're here to learn and the school is looking for smart people who want to learn and people who can follow the rigorous curriculum. Um, and rest assured, if they take a chance on you and give you an offer, they want you to thrive and stay. So how do you measure academic excellence? Um, and that is definitely something I'm sure all of you have been working on uh, with grades, um, with standardized testing. Um, that's certainly um, something that 
uh, they do focus on. Although this year with COVID, um, a lot of these schools have gone test optional. Um, that being said, um, if you have really high test scores, uh, you should submit them. And um, a lot of the students who do have them will. So um, it never hurts to throw that in. Um, and standardized test scores, I know a lot of parents put a lot of emphasis on this. Um, it is important. I would say it's slightly more important than when you're applying to universities. Um, it is a benchmark for them to see, OK, uh, can the student handle the math curriculum? Do they have a grasp of the vocabulary? How's their reading comprehension? Um, but that being said, it's not the be all and end all. Um, your grades in the context of the classes you're taking matter. Um, obviously, they've been working with Hong Kong for quite a while. So if you've uh, gone to a school that um, regularly sends um, their students to boarding school, they're very familiar with the grading system. And so as a result, that sort of dilutes the uh, the necessity of these test scores. Uh, but think of it as uh, looking at it together. Um, but in addition to that, they wanna make sure you can handle the rigorous curriculum. They wanna make sure that you do enjoy learning and you have intellectual curiosity. Um, a lot of uh, parents do ask me as well, oh, so do all my grades have to be really strong? I would say definitely on the core subjects, um, especially math and English, uh, for the other ones, I think science, if you if you do thrive in the STEM subjects, they'll take, they'll take note. Um, but let's say if your Chinese isn't that strong, um, that might not be um, that might not be a deal breaker. So for so I'll, I'll start talking a little bit more about other things in addition to this, because um, I, I'm sure there are a few of you who are already um, in the process of applying. Um, for schools uh, such as Milton, for example, um, they would ask you, um, actually a few schools would ask, ask this as well, um, if you were to create a personal library of three books, which three books would you be sure to include of any genre and why? Um, or tell us about a recent school project or assignment that you really enjoyed. Um, in SAO, they also ask what uh, what book have you read in the past year and tell us why you enjoyed it. So they do want to know that you are reading um, and you're reading a variety of books in um, the Milton example. And also um, what excites you when you're thinking about um, when you're thinking about learning. So the other part of this is service and leadership. Um, so I've already read the Taft motto and the Andover motto. Um, so for St. Mark's, they talk about young people for the lives of leadership and service. Kent um, wants to foster the growth of honorable, responsible citizens for our country and our diverse world. Um, for Loomis, a commitment to the best self and the common good. Um, so in Hotchkiss, for example, one of the essays that they ask you to talk about, um, which is one of the long, uh, longer questions, is we sell at Hotchkiss, we celebrate those who give back to the community. How would you try to serve the school or wider world beyond Hotchkiss? Um, so when you answer a type of question like this, you definitely wanna think about what you have done in your past and how you can bring uh, the perspective or maybe if Hotchkiss doesn't have say your recycling program, how would you introduce something like that? So uh, those would be things that you should think about. Um, how would you bring your experience to the school that you are looking at. So for service, sustained involvement, um, when you're writing about not for self, Andover has an essay about this. What are your takeaways? What's your personal reflection? And when you think about other people and, and recognize the privilege, since if you're applying to boarding school, you probably are in a position of privilege. So how do you think about the world around you and um, those who are in need, especially um, in this time of COVID? Um, in terms of leadership, uh, we, we totally understand that um, at the age of 13 or 14, you may or may not have had that much leadership experience. It's great if you were able to become captain of your soccer team or uh, the volleyball team, um, so you can demonstrate that. Or in another way, you can discuss your leadership qualities, and these are personal qualities. 
if you've had, if you've taken the initiative to do something, if you're respectful, responsible, accountable, um, communication skills. So these are things that can come through in your essay. It can come through in your parent statements, uh, which all you parents will have to write. Um, and also during the interview. So within the interview, um, they'll interview the student and they'll also interview the parent as well. So you can talk a little bit about that there. Community. I think this is probably the most important part of, um, of boarding school admissions. Um, so you have the grades, you have the test scores. Um, so how do you fit into this community? So all of them talk about, um, for example, CHO allows for teachers and students to live with and learn from each other in important ways. And then the Kate community contributes. Um, I read that one earlier as well. Um, for Lawrenceville, they want to challenge a diverse community of promising young people to lead the lives of learning, integrity, and high purpose. And Hotchkiss talks about a healthy and inclusive learning community. So everyone um, needs to support one another. You want to think about what your community is today and how, um, how you will communicate, uh, uh, contribute to the community in the future. Um, so for community, they want diversity. They want to build a group of extroverts and introverts. Um, and they want to think about what you have to offer. So sports, arts, if you're, um, if you're a strong point guard, um, if you are a virtuoso violinist, um, if you have other special interests that you can bring uh, to, to the boarding school community that they haven't seen. And a very important question is, have you engaged in your current community. So a lot of these uh, boarding schools have a question in their essays about how would you add to the school's class or program and communities? That is a question at St. Paul's. Um, and then for Milton, again, is a vibrant and diverse place. Being a part of the community, Milton community is an experience that extends well beyond the classroom. How do you see yourself contributing to this community? And in terms of your skills and your special interests, um, I'm just going to go into a little bit of the nitty gritty of the application itself. Um, what I'm showing down here is the uh, candidate profile for the gateway application. Um, so it shows, um, you know, your extracurricular, your personal and your volunteer activities. Um, of course, uh, all our students are very involved in sports and music. Um, they might have a spike somewhere. At Baker and Bloom, we always encourage our students to do personal projects because um, outside of the classroom, it's really important to think of what are your interests. Um, we might have a student doing their own history project or something coding related. Um, and a lot of parents come to me and ask, what's the point of this? Um, and I do want to draw your attention to this section where um, where the instructions list very clearly, know your interests and activities in order of importance to you in areas such as music, drama, art, community service. There's quite a lot, but the last item is hobbies. We understand that some candidates have more opportunities for organized activities than others, but we are interested in how you spend your time outside of the classroom. So they're looking to build a community, obviously of smart, students, but they also want to see that in addition to having the grades and the test scores that you have something else to offer to the school. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, if you feel like I want to do a little bit of everything, I'm an athlete, I'm a musician, I love to paint, then by all means include all of that there. Um, but the important thing is that you have shown that you're passionate about something. Um, and so if you look at the, the lines here, this is probably, it's very technical, but the years of experience and the hours per week, I think are probably quite important and make sure that you, you think carefully about this because um, you want to show your, your own personal dedication. Um, we have some students who are really, really involved in their sports and they travel for tournaments. Um, and then they come to me and say, oh, Karen, I don't have, these activities, I haven't done that much, but the only thing I have is soccer. But when we do the math, um, we realize that they've actually done, spent most of their time doing soccer. And so it shows that you've got depth in your activities and it's not just something that you're doing to check off a box. 
Um, so that's something that you should definitely keep in mind. So another really cool thing about the candidate profile is you get two links to multimedia. And that's something that I really encourage um, if you're applying now or if you're gearing up to apply uh, to think about. Because if you feel like you are really strong in a particular sport, um, you want to show your hockey moves, you want to show uh, running or you want to show your form in basketball, um, make sure that you have YouTube links on your highlights. Um, same thing with music or with um, performing art. Uh, it's really important that you know you record some uh, some of your best performances um, and you can put them together in a YouTube. It doesn't need to be perfect and completely polished. Um, in fact, if it's a little bit rough around the edges, it might seem a lot more um, authentic. Um, after all, these are kids applying to high school. So um, I actually encourage uh, the student to be even more involved in this because um, at the end of the day, this is the uh, what you're presenting to the world. Another thing that um, we at Baker and Bloom really encourage would be personal websites. So if you do your own project, if you if you've had years of tinkering with Legos, with with 3D printing, um, if you, if you have all of your all of your um, um, projects that you've put together, I highly recommend putting a personal website together. Um, or if you've been doing your own cooking show during COVID or, or, or experimenting with baking, that's also something that I would encourage you to document um, so that you can share what you've been doing um, in your free time. Um, and of course, community service, um, how you can actually um, probably put these, uh, combine your community service with all your other interests um, somehow to link them together and make it even more um, authentic. Uh, so this is something that I feel like a lot of students don't really think about until they're about to apply and they don't realize they actually have a lot of material that they can work with. Um, one personal example I just wanted to share was I do have a student who um, created something um, uh, with computer science and they had actually started when they were very young and they actually were filming it with their family and it, it was really cool because they showed me this video of of the kid before um you know as, as they were younger they were a little chubbier it was, it was really cute and then you see the kids sitting in front of me and and they're sharing what how how their project has evolved so it, it's it's really nice to see that growth and that development and certainly it, it shows dedication um so that's something that you know if for for some members of our audience with younger kids that might be something worth exploring as well. Um, another thing, um, as you guys are entering interview season, um, one thing that I would um, highly recommend is to think about um, tips or is to give you some tips on interviewing. So um, when I'm prepping my students, um, usually uh, the biggest thing that I would recommend is to build a message box. So what are the three things you want the school to know about you and how do you work it into the interview? Um, I'm not a big fan of over prepping for interviews because usually the, um, the admissions uh, officer who's interviewing you um, has seen a lot of kids already and they know who are scripted um, and they're not deliberately trying to throw you off, but they are definitely interested in having a conversation with you just to see again, fit and community, whether you'll fit into that community. You don't have to be the most outgoing extroverted person, um, but you do have to be prepared to share what is unique and special about you. Um, so it could be personality traits. Um, you know, you could, you could lead off with, um, I, you know, I love science. I am um, maybe not hardworking, but I'm very dedicated to, to what I do. Um, I'm responsible and accountable. And then you give examples of, of each of these. So, um, or if you wanna say, I have been playing competitive soccer for the past 10 years, um, and it is a very important part of me. I represent my school in these tournaments and, um, and I, uh, I've uh, been captain for middle school. Um, so those are things that um, 
if you feel like that is the most important thing about you, make sure that is front and center when you're building this message box. Um, three things, I would say, there are other questions that they might ask. And another way to prep for the interview is start looking at the essay questions. Um, but what you would want to do is to um, look at the essay questions and think about what they're looking for. So books that you've read, my friends would say, what about me? Um, what are my academic strengths and weaknesses? Um, but the three things that I would definitely have um, want everyone to prepare for would be, tell me about yourself. So this is a one to two minute introduction where you talk about yourself and you can bring up what is important about you. And that is something that I usually run through with my students and it's worth um, on your own to prepare for that. Um, and then be prepared to answer any follow-up questions from the interviewer on that. Research the school. Um, I, I, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking about uh, applying to um, five to eight schools. So you wanna make sure you keep track of these schools, what their signature programs are, what they um, emphasize and um, be prepared to share that. And the more prepared you are, um, the better you will look to the admissions officer because they feel like you want to go to. The schools want you to show that you want them. So it's it's a two way street. It's you know they're here to sell you how amazing the school is, and they're also here to see if you're going to be a good fit for the school as well. And then the third one would be any questions. So the questions that I would love for my students to prepare. Um, usually, you don't want to ask anything obvious that you could find on the website, like oh, is there a robotics club? That might not um, might not be a productive question. Um, but you can look up the, your interviewer in advance, um, especially now that we're all on Zoom. Um, and then you can, you can see, for example, if they're an alum of the school, what ask them about their favorite experience, what they're looking for in students. Um, again, this is a conversation. So make sure that um, you are um, asking a question that opens itself to other questions and you're able to have a good, robust conversation about it. Um, so on that note, um, most of this has been mostly student focused, but just to address the parent side of things. So there's the parent statement and the parent interview. And during this time, um, you are also talking about the three things you want the school to know about your, your child. Um, but the important thing is have personal anecdotes. Uh, because what they're looking for is to humanize and um, uh, and, and bring the student to life um, after they've looked at the grades, the recommendation letters, the, the activities list, the resume. So now it's up to you as a parent to really talk about, okay, so what are the conversations I have um, with my with my child? Um, what what how what do they think? What are well, you know what are the um, things we do together as a family. Um, how do we get to where we are? How do we get to deciding to apply to this boarding school? Um, that's actually a choke parent statement question. Um, how did you arrive at the decision to apply to choke? So um, worth considering. Um, so how Baker and Bloom can help, and we can talk a little bit um, later about this. Um, we have inspired projects. So these are, uh, uh, as I mentioned, specialty projects, they could be academic and they can be um, personal. Um, so if, uh, for example, your student, your child wanted to explore uh, creating games, um, that's certainly something that um, we can help with. Or um, maybe they wanted to write a collection of poems or short stories. Um, we also have um, creative writing experts who can help you with that. Um, academic writing courses. Uh, so. One thing, you know, as you're applying to boarding school to note is that the English curriculum and boarding schools are extremely rigorous. Uh, you're required to write essays weekly and read a book um, once a week as well. And, um, and it, uh, given um, the rigor of it, it uh, a lot of students coming from Hong Kong do have um, a bit of trouble catching up. Um, so that's something that we can help out at Baker and Bloom as well to um, get your child prepared for um, what is expected of them when they go to boarding school. Um, we do offer test prep as well, SSAT, ISE, and TOEFL. 
um, essay preparation. Um, certainly, um, I'd be happy to help with um, the boarding school essays. That's uh, definitely something that I, I do. And um, throughout this brainstorming process, both for the essays and for the parent statements, I always think that it is uh, something that um, it, it's a moment of self-reflection because if you think about it, um, your child is 13, 14, um, they've, they've accomplished quite a bit, but they're also starting beginning to, to come into their own. So reflecting back on the past few years is, is, is quite uh, remarkable. Portfolio support um, for the artists out there, um, how to put uh, their works of art, their paintings together. Um, we can help out with captions, ordering what type of um, what a variety of uh, work to include. Um, those are things that we can help out with as well. Interview preparation, um, I definitely talked a little bit about that earlier, but I'm certainly happy to run through that um, with um, the students as well. Um, coaching, uh, just really just talking through, and I know that applying to school is a very stressful um, process. So um, working with the student, working with um, their workload, um, and ensuring that they are um, balanced in, in their time. I think that's uh, quite important as well. Um, so I wanted to take a pause right now and see if anyone had any questions. Um, I wanted to see if uh, we have any right now. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about um, US boarding schools right now? Let's see if I can go back. So actually, what is really interesting, one of my favorite applications for, um, for boarding school is, is probably Milton's. And I know I've been picking at that a lot, but um, it's quite fun. So they have a um, uh, complete the following sentences, uh, short kind of hundred character questions that uh, answers that they want you to, to answer. Um, and so, and it's it's quite interesting year over year to see what students um, uh, create. Um, but some of the funny ones are um, my family says I, and then you have to complete that sentence. Something surprises surprising about me is my teachers often tell me I am at my best when. What is really funny is. And then another, actually my personal favorite is um, rainy days. And you just have a hundred characters to say what rainy days means to you. Oh, um, my apologies, everyone. Um, so it seems that Rory is unable to join us today. Um, so we will unfortunately have to do um, the UK boarding school uh, segment another time. Um, I'm, I'm sincerely, uh, I'm very, very sorry about this. Um, but, um, and I know that you guys were likely looking very forward to the boarding, uh, to the UK boarding school segment. Um, uh, one thing that uh, we do offer at Baker and Bloom is uh, you can schedule a, a free 30 minute consultation with Rory and with myself, um, if you'd like to learn more about the programs that we offer. Um, uh, at this point, what I would love to do is answer some of the questions, or if you have questions for Rory, um, what we can do is we can document that and then um, and then uh, follow up with you after this webinar. Um, so what I will do is um, please feel free to uh, direct any questions to me, um, and uh, 
and we can work on answering that right now. Oh, the previous slides. Oh, sure. Um, let me see. Where can I go? Um, let me just move back to candidate profile. So just to run through them really quickly from, um, so we had a few uh, members join. So uh, I just wanted to share through the slides quickly um, about the mission statements again. Um, let's see. And then the themes that each boarding school is looking for. And again, you can definitely find the culture of the boarding school through what, um, what programs they choose to highlight. Um, and then um, one thing that uh, we have noticed is when a school focuses a lot on learning support, um, it tends to be a lot more caring. So I, I know that the um, uh, there might be this, this impression that boarding schools are, are extremely cutthroat and very competitive, uh, but there are schools and, and that can be true to a certain extent. Um, most of them do want to cultivate and, and, and nurture. And so um, what I would say about this is that they, um, if they have accepted you, they want you to thrive. And so they do offer a myriad of academic support to ensure that you're not falling behind. And um, for a lot of these schools, you have um, your, your advisor, who is someone who deals directly with you, and then also your, um, your academic dean who is in charge of the entire year. And um, they are the ones who um, can communicate with, with your teachers and with you um, in case you're falling behind or um, need extra academic support. Um, obviously prep school, they're called prep schools because they're trying to prepare you for university, but they all, all but I think um, one thing that I, I do want to emphasize to our parents is that, yes, you can get into a great university through these schools, but the academic experience is what um, allows it to stand out because there are all these great um, signature courses that they offer, um, um, especially once you, if you've gone through, um, uh, for example, with math, if you've, if you've already placed out of all the um, the calculus courses, you can go into more advanced topics. Um, same with um, science or foreign languages, um, or if you've, um, if you're a classic scholar, certainly that's also the case. Um, so I think that the, uh, and then for schools like Choate, they have uh, programs like the capstone program where you can design your own research um, and work with um, and work with a faculty member to to really um, uh, to to delve into a topic, kind of like the inspired project. So, if you wanted to, for example, do an inspired project where you delve into a topic and then take that further when you go to a school like Choate, that is also possible as well. I think that community is probably the biggest factor. Um, because we've, we've seen a lot of very, very strong students who um, you know, apply to all these boarding schools. And it is, very, it is getting more and more competitive to apply to these schools from Hong Kong. And so um, you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of students with, with strong grades and strong test scores, um, but then how do they fit in is something that uh, these admissions officers really look very carefully and um, they really want to get to know you. So when I when I think about the Milton essays, right? You, um, it's it's hard to think about what type of personality type they're looking for, but they want you to be candid. Um, and usually in the first few drafts of the essays that I see, um, they tend to be uh, 
I've, I've definitely had students also ask me, what are they looking for me to write? And the answer I would give is, I'm not sure. Um, it, it, they're, they're looking for who you are. You shouldn't be thinking about what they're looking for, but with revealing who you are, because the more personal you can make this, the better they can determine what kind of a picture you're painting um, and, and what kind of a personality you are. So in terms of um, the community, uh, one thing to really think about as well is the mix of boarders to day students. Um, for example, St. Paul's is 100% boarding. Um, so there's benefits to that. Um, uh, for, for a school like uh, Milton, there might be a, lot, a larger proportion of day students coming from the Boston area. Um, I, I went to Taft. So Taft had a, also a good proportion of day students. And I do feel that it adds to a more local, um, you know, you're, you're able to see um, what the local Connecticut community or the Massachusetts com community, um, what uh, I guess who these people are, and it really allows you to connect to where you're living. Um, uh, not saying that 100% uh, boarding wouldn't offer you that experience, but um, I definitely appreciated um, having day students as well. Um, and that way you can get to know um, uh, you can get to know their parents and and uh, hear more about what uh, what the local communities are. Any newer or more obscure U.S. boarding schools that are good? Um, to be honest, I think that the the really popular ones are very competitive. Um, but then as you go along, um, I think uh, there are a few schools that I, I listed here that are still popular, but may not have as high of a um, admit uh, or as low of an admit rate. Um, so schools that, but then they offer also an extremely strong and competitive curriculum as well. Um, so in terms of, I, I wouldn't say they're obscure per se, um, but then um, they tend to be, so usually the students come to me and they only apply to maybe a handful of schools. Um, so the ones I would I would say that tend to be quite popular or oversubscribed would be say Hotchkiss, Deerfield, Choate, Milton, Andover, Exeter, St. Paul's, um, Broughton, Lawrenceville. Um, I might be missing one or two, but um, usually we like to recommend a school like Berkshire. Um, it's still competitive, um, but it's not um, to the same degree as, uh, say, Andover or Exeter. Um, I would say same deal with, uh, with a school like Loomis or Northfield Mount Hermon. Um, I know a lot of students go to Northfield Mount Hermon. It has, um, it, uh, although it's certainly not as oversubscribed, so I would still um, strongly recommend those. Um, recently, we've had a lot of students also go uh, look into Williston, Northampton. That's another popular one as well. Um, and the Hill School in Pennsylvania. Um, when you're looking at uh, these schools, definitely look at the sports seasons as well. Because if you're looking at, say, um, you want to play tennis and soccer, um, then the schools in the Mid-Atlantic, mid which are schools in New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, um, they actually fall in the same season. Whereas in New England, you would have soccer in the fall season and tennis in the spring season. Um, so when you look at schools, definitely, um, and, and you have a strong student athlete, definitely look also at, um, at location. Um, so other schools in the Mid-Atlantic, um, they're Pop, they're not as competitive, but still rigorous um, would be say the Petty School is another another great option. Um, Mercersburg is also a good one. I think that um, that one certainly may not be in the same um, league as say Andover or Exeter, um, but then it still is well funded and also has very, very strong um, academic programs as well.
so we have a question. How has COVID and the current political climate changed US boarding schools? Um, so COVID has been um, uh, certainly been a challenge for uh, students who are at boarding school right now. Um, most of the students I have uh, that are that decided to go back um, are coming back for Thanksgiving um, and they will be here and through the winter term. So there will not be a winter term um, that will be done online. And um, it's to be confirmed whether they will return, uh, they could return for the spring season. Um, in terms of the current political climate, um, I haven't really seen politics impact um, boarding school as much. Um, I feel like that tends to be uh, a bigger issue with universities uh, just because of uh, visa requirements. Um, but I think that with, um, with COVID, it is mostly um, how the term is progressing and how um, and whether the students will be there in person or, um, or remote. Um, for, for some students, the thing is it's, it's um, I think they, they, for some schools, they did, um, implement um, a policy where only freshmen and seniors can go back, whereas sophomores and juniors had to stay um, and do remote teaching to, to uh, distance things out. Um, for others, uh, I guess every school has different policies. So they, they, would, um, they would teach one class per trimester. Um, and, um, and, uh, uh, and so they, they're trying to like pack the students in each semester per, um, uh, sorry. So they, they would, um, for example, let you finish um, your math course in one semester, and then you would focus on English um, or, or another, or history for the next term. Um, so for, um, for some of our students who have, um, who are currently at, in boarding school in the U.S., um, for example, with the common cold, um, that has been impact. Uh, that has also had some impact as well. Um, that uh, the schools don't. Um, the parents have very little control over um, what happens if the student gets sick and uh, the student is abroad. Um, so, when should Hong Kong students apply for U.S. boarding schools? Uh, so, what I would say is. Um, their intake is grade nine for high school. And so you should apply um, grade eight, which is form two um, in local schools and um, probably year nine for the UK system. Um, so you would take your SSATs that year. Um, so if you're applying for September, 2021, you would take the SSATs between September to January of 2020. Um, they wouldn't accept the tests if you take it before that. Um, and however, there's also junior boarding schools. That's another thing that's quite popular. Um, and so you can start as early as uh, sixth grade, but many students start in the seventh grade. So you, uh, so the junior boarding schools are middle schools that prep you uh, to apply to the senior boarding schools, which is ninth grade to 12th grade. Um, and so you would also apply the year before. Any other questions? Okay, um, so typical admissions process. Um, so depending on um, when you guys are thinking about uh, boarding school, we've had students join us um, as early as grade six um, and uh, Usually we talk about their interests. It's possible that um, depending on the student, they may or may not have found what they're interested in. So it's more of a periodic checking in and um, prepping for um, uh, going in, well, in times of without COVID, we would then say, okay, have you, have you ever lived in um, away from your family, either in summer camps or summer schools? And so one thing that um, we would highly encourage is to visit these schools either uh, during summer schools or during the October term break or Chinese New Year. Um, 
in normal times, um, many of our students uh, go during the summer. And that's when um, you can go on the official tour and you could also do an interview. Actually, a lot of schools encourage that. Um, I have a lot of parents who are worried, oh, my, my kid hasn't done any interview prep. What if um, they're not ready? And um, and these boarding schools are actually quite, uh, quite uh, accommodating. So they feel like if you want another shot at the interview, um, you can feel free to schedule it uh, during the application cycle, which is around November. Um, so, so don't worry too much if uh, you feel like you didn't do that well during the visitation process. So you go through sixth, seventh grade. Um, what we would encourage is likely to take um, some English classes to ensure that your reading comprehension is strong and to build your vocabulary, because that is something that many of our students definitely have trouble with, especially in the SSATs. Um, and then we start talking about special interest projects. So what we were talking about in um, the candidate profile, let me just find that slide so that you can look at it as well. Um, so, so we, we would then encourage the student to start thinking about, okay, what, what holes are present in your, um, in, in your profile. Um, and, and usually the biggest one would be community service. Um, and while we, we also feel that um, you shouldn't just do it for the sake of doing it, we do tend to see if you can put it together with what, um, what your child's personal interest is. Um, so um, if, uh, for example, um, we had one student start a bake sale um, for, uh, to raise funds for, um, for uh, a supermarket um, vouchers, um, we had another student um, do a, uh, a, who, who loved to sing, um, perform um, in a charity benefit. Um, and, um, or you can use your technology to build an app that measures your vital signs. Um, and that was for another student's personal, um, through, through a personal um, experience where um, their grandparent had a stroke. And so they decided they, to use their coding skills to create, um, uh, to, to link the vital signs to an app that would notify um, the next of kin in case there were, were there were certain drops in vital signs. Um, so any project would, would work. Um, it's more about the depth of, of um, what you, you, um, you delve into and, and sustained um, involvement, but, um, but your finished product, um, you could either put in um, through a link in the multimedia or, um, or you can um, upload it as a, um, you know, a one pager on, on the candidate profile. Um, so between sixth grade to seventh grade, that would be what you'd be working on. Um, obviously maintaining your grades and we can talk about school lists. Um, and then we'd really get into um, kind of the, uh, the, gist, the, the, uh, the thick of things um, towards the end of the summer uh, before uh, grade eight, if you're entering grade nine. Um, so we would work on essays. Um, a lot of these schools don't really release their applications until September anyway. Um, so, um, but the essays don't really change. So it's always helpful to get started, get a head start on thinking about brainstorming books, um, sort of the common themes that we talked about, books, community, community service, um, influential people in your life. Uh, and um, since these essays don't really change that much, it's, you can, if you have a top choice, certainly um, feel free to start brainstorming those essays and we really get into it um, probably between September to uh, December of the year that you're applying. Um, another thing that you should be doing uh, before this would be test prep. And um, we have some excellent um, test prep tutors here who can help you. What I would recommend is taking a practice test, maybe the June before to see where you are so that you can benchmark um, what your strengths and weaknesses are and um, push yourself to um, uh, uh, and, and focus more with, with the one-on-one -on -one tutoring on, on areas that you feel like you need more help in. Um, I, so I know that schools accept both SSATs and ISEEs. I usually recommend the SSATs because you could take it every month, um, whereas the ISEE, um, you can only take one once per semester. Uh, so you have a bit more um, flexibility that way. Um, 
And so I would, we would do essays between September to December slash January. Um, we can do uh, interview prep as well. Um, and in addition to that, I, I can, I would work with the parents um, on um, the parent statements. What are the differences between sports and STEM in boarding schools versus Hong Kong? Opportunities to compete. Um, so what I have heard about with sports in Hong Kong is uh, I think that you are, um, I, I have a student who is competing in one sport that, and, and actually competing at a pretty high level uh, representing Hong Kong. And um, the student, it, it has taken up quite a bit of the student's time. And so um, if that is the direction you want to go, I would say stay in Hong Kong because this is where you can really thrive and shine. Um, however, if you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm done with playing this sport. I really want, I, I want to pl continue playing it in high school, but I also want to try other sports. So um, for example, if the student is a squash player um, and they wanted to try tennis or lacrosse or um, whatever it is, um, they, um, they, I think that if you want to compete uh, and represent Hong Kong and you have the passport, stay in Hong Kong, I think that you can really thrive that way. But then if you want to compete in other sports and, and balance things out a little bit, I would recommend boarding school. Um, you do play at the varsity level um, quite um, competitively, especially, for example, for some of the squash teams in these boarding schools, they play against uh, university teams. So. Um, certainly, you can um, you can uh, be recruited into some of the top universities with the sports that um, you play through boarding school. Um, with STEM, I do feel that a lot of these um, a lot of these schools are pouring quite a bit of um, uh, resources into into their STEM facilities, and you you'll definitely see them on their websites because they do showcase. Um, you, you know their robotics program or or their their engineering um, competitions, um, and so what I would say is I would highly recommend you look for which schools are big enough to compete, um, say in the math Olympiad or 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 in other robotics competitions within the U.S. And I think that that gives you more exposure when you are in the U.S. Um, there are schools in Hong Kong that are building up their their um, fab their uh, engineering um, facilities as well. So I wouldn't discount um, that aspect of uh, Hong Kong schools, um, but I would say that um, that there is a lot more room um, for schools that, um, uh, for example, um, I'm going to throw out one that's not the typical New England school, which is Iolani in um, Hawaii, um, they have a boarding program and they've built this huge state of the art facility um, for um, and, and um, they're really pushing their STEM initiatives. Um, so, uh, so this is, I'll take one more question, which is uh, from Jess, uh, the advantage of applying from boarding schools versus international schools and the differences between college advising in boarding schools and international schools. Um, I have to say that um, having done um, college admissions as well, um, that college advising in schools in Hong Kong um, does vary, but then for certainly for uh, some of the international schools that I've been working with, they, uh, students that I've been working with, their, um, their college counselors have been very involved. Um, that being said, I think that uh, boarding schools also have very experienced college advisors. Um, and they they know um, and they're they're also very well connected with the um, admissions officers in universities in the U.S. So I guess it, it it's not necessarily an advantage per se because a lot of most of us are going sending our kids to um, boarding school to increase their chances to go to a better university. So it, it really is um, a matter of seeing the how how the student will thrive um, once they are there. Um, and I would say that's the case for schools in Hong Kong as well. So um, if say you are um, if, if say you are at um, uh, you know the top of your year in one boarding school, but then you sent um, 
you would have been the top of your year in one boarding school, but then you went to a much bigger and much more competitive boarding school. You know, you're, you're, you may have been the top of the year in your school now, but then you might not be that way. You might be in the middle um, of say uh, a school like Andover on Exeter. So, um, uh, so that's something to, to keep in mind because um, uh, I have a lot of students who, who say, I must go to this boarding school, um, but then we feel that that might not be the best fit. So the important thing is to go to a boarding school that is um, where you will thrive and you, um, you may not be the, um, that it's not a stretch to send your student to, to that school. But in terms of college advising, um, they are uh, very, very strong and good at what they do in the US boarding schools. And um, they might um, know more about other lesser known universities that will give um, an equally good um, education um, than say someone who's based in Hong Kong. Um, so again, thank you um, all of you uh, for uh, uh, for joining us today. We're very sorry about Rory's technical difficulties. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, we will offer one um, uh, just on UK boarding schools soon, and we will record. We have a recorded webinar that we can share with you. Um, please contact us if they want us to. Uh, please uh, let us know if you want um, us to meet with your student. Um, and also um, one thing that I do want to show is that we do have our Christmas workshops. So um, feel free to reach out to us to schedule either a consultation with myself or with Rory for UK boarding schools. And um, if you're interested in any of our um, holiday courses. Thank you very much, everybody.